Chapter 3 The Next Chapter All looked quite dire for Rita. Bernard had her within his grasp. Surely it would just be mere moments before his jaws collapsed upon her head. Oh, what a horrible end for Rita! Needless to say, I am worried for her. But, as luck would have it, miles and miles away, 20 years earlier, something amazing happened. Two mugs of cheese, a Gouda and a mozzarella, welcomed their first son into the world. I don't think I need to tell you his name. It was Dave. No one liked Dave. After that, their second son came forth, Richter the Cracked. Just called Richter at that time. Richter spent his early life stealing cowbells and putting them on skunks. This way, people always knew when danger was nearby. Needless to say, Richter was one smart mug of cheese. But all could not remain perfect forever. And suddenly, the great skunk famine began. Richter found his world in array, and he sought a new purpose. Fortunately, there was an opening in the governor's county for an adventurer at the time, and since he was a descendant of the three Grand Flagon Kings, he was boosted to the head of the line. Because, as we are all quite aware, even in olden times, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Thus, the adventures of Richter began. He braved deep dungeons, he slayed the great beasts, he climbed the highest mountain peaks, he sailed around the world despite the fact that he didn't own a boat. Richter was truly the stuff of legend. But did I mention the curse? Uh, yes, fair readers, there is a curse. A fiendish and terrible curse. One morning, while Richter was in the governor's county, he came upon a witch named Witch. This witch had just pulled a pound cake from her oven, where she then proceeded to start ingesting it, right there on the front walk of her home. At once, Richter knew this creature was pure evil. Eating cake this early in the morning? And without ice cream? This was truly a fiend that needed to be vanquished. Richter jumped her fence and pulled his sword. Would you like some pound cake? The witch offered. It looked quite delicious. Richter would not let himself be seduced into early morning cake, so he approached closer with his weapon at her throat. The witch began to sweat with a mouthful of crumbs. I also make a mean scone, if you can wait. Now, no gentleman or gentle mug could refuse a good scone. So Richter withdrew his sword and patiently waited for the witch to create these new buttery pastries. But what he didn't know was that the witch accidentally had bumped her table and had added within the mixture a vial of cursed liquid. See? I told you there was a curse. You were fair warned. The moment Richter ate of the scones, he fell into a deep sleep. The witch, baffled, finished her cake and proceeded to get a civil service job in a nearby town. As the years rolled by, all that remained of the witch's curse was carried off by elves and her garden became overgrown. This left only Richter asleep in the forest with no end to his dreaming in sight. But the story thankfully does not end here, for, as luck would have it, a giant man covered in cheese, with big eyes and big ears, wandered past a sleeping mug. In case you've forgotten, this was the cheese owner Murray, sometimes called Bill. Unable to resist cheese of any kind, even a mug of the stuff, Murray took Richter to his shop and set him on a shelf. Here Richter sat for many years until this very fateful day. You see, in Rita's haste to gather up all the cheese she had purchased, she had swept a few things that did not belong to her into the sack as well. These items included the cat on the counter, a personalized pen, Murray's cash box, I think she'll be hearing about this one eventually, and last but not least, Richter himself, still deeply asleep. So now that our two stories have come together, let's discover what happened next to Rita and Richter in the climax chapter.